but it tells me it's you're gonna choose peace. This is what you want. You want to. It's not that you ask and you ask and you ask and you receive it. It's that you choose to find the peace within the storm. So that's kind of what my shoes are here for. Because it all depends on how you look at it will determine your experience. These shoes, practical for some things, not practical for others. These heels right here, practical for a formal event. Anything else, they're torture devices because they're cages. And they're, they hurt. The tennis shoes, great for running, ex exercising, everyday living. Not so good for work because they're not non-slip. Black shoes right next to it, non-slip shoes. Great for work, great for classic black shoes, don't have anything else, they're great because they're non-slip and they're lovely. Slippers, not really practical for anything, but they're comfortable. Those are one of the things to wear. I wouldn't wear those. Those are Maddie's, but she loves them to death. I would much rather go barefoot. Flip-flops, I don't wear them. There was actually one time I got a story with those that'll go with them. But where I wanted to start with peace was Ephesians 6, 13 in the armor of God. It's Ephesians 6, 13 through 17. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and that ye have done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girth about your truth, belt of truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, where you shall be quenched by the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. I want to focus on the gospel of peace on your feet. Flip-flops. Worn them to Jamboree one year because it was hot, didn't want to wear tennis shoes. Ended up with blisters all under my feet and in between my toes because I chose the wrong shoes. It made the, I wore those on Friday. It made Saturday and Sunday absolutely miserable because I couldn't walk. So it's one of those to wear. The shoes of peace, we have to choose to wear what shoes we're going to wear. I wouldn't wear the heels to Jamboree. It's on grass. My feet would constantly be sinking. I'd break my ankles somehow because they're evil. I haven't worn them in years. <laughs> We need to choose to wear the shoes of peace. It's something, I'll choose to wear my Birkenstocks every day of the year if I can, because I can wear them with socks. But along with that, I'm not gonna wear my Birkenstocks to work, because I can't, mostly. <laughs> One of the things to wear, this is where improper shoes will hurt your feet. And when you get hurt, you can no longer walk properly. And when you forget your peace, you can't walk correctly with God. So it's one of those, if I hurt my feet later on during at the beach, I'm not going to be able to walk correctly on Monday doing Tuesday when I work because I have Monday off. <laughs> Both jobs. It's great. Except I'm stealing on Monday. And one of the things with the blisters on your feet, from wearing the improper shoes? What kind of spiritual blisters are people walking around with today because of improper shoes? Which, most of the time in the spiritual world, all of the time actually, the proper shoes are peace. So you gotta choose to put on peace. But even when all chaos breaks out, you're still wanting to choose peace. When you're heading towards that storm, that we visualized last week, that when you close your eyes and you look forward and there was just storms rolling in, there was, I felt no peace about that. When I saw that, all I wanted to do is turn around and hightail it back to my calm waters. But I didn't, I stayed there and I keep going forward. But it's all about choosing the peace within that storm. Choosing to call out on Jesus, hey, I need help. Help me through this. That we want a peace that passes all understanding with Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Be careful.
Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your requests be made, un, be, be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Peace is not something that comes and goes, but it's something that we have to choose. That's kind of where I'm at with peace, is that it's hard for me to choose peace sometimes, as the people that drove with me. I don't like slow drivers at all. I get very irritable with slow drivers. Becca witnessed that yesterday when the speed limit was 20, 25. I thought it was 35. No, you it, go 35. I go 35 and 25. And 25. Shush. <laughs> it's on L. Nobody, nobody goes there. Lady was going 15. There were several lanes in my head I wanted to call her. I didn't. Still wanted to. <laughs> you also wouldn't just go around it. No, I wouldn't. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's me, though, sometimes. But, and as I was reading over this, I realized, okay, I really need to stop doing that because I need to choose peace within those moments. It's not something you can lose or something you can, it's only something you can forfeit because you don't choose it. Kind of like in, nope, I'm skipping this one, sorry. And peace is only found in Jesus because he is the prince of peace. As in, named in Isaiah 6, Isaiah 9, 6 through 7, he is the prince of peace. Temporary escapes, we label them as peace. Things that you feel peaceful doing. What are some things that you guys feel peaceful doing? Taking a nap. Napping. Reading. Reading. What are... Drawing. Eating. Music. Music, yeah. And I honestly, I wrote, what I wrote down for my things are baking, reading, drawing, etc. And it's, those are temporary escapes that we label ourselves for peace. Because when I want something peaceful, I go to my books. That's what I do. Reach. I like reading. But true peace is only found in Jesus. When we're in that attack of like, Oh no, I can't stand what's going on right now. I can't handle the storm alone. You're not alone. You just need to ask. He, Jesus promised you peace, but he never promi promised the absence of pressure. That kind of goes back into what Mike was teaching last week with the storm. The pressure is the only way you will know how to have peace, though. If I didn't have blisters on my foot... I wouldn't realize the pain and how to find peace within that pain. <coughs> within Matthew 8, 20, Matthew 8, 23 through 27. And when he entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And be there, and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered and with waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this? Even the winds and the seas obey him. It was suddenly good and then bad. It was just that suddenly here and then there. It was the bad, worst thing you can imagine, storm. Waves crashing over your boat, tearing it bit by bit. And Jesus just said, calm, peace. And it stopped. There was still the clouds. There was still the waves. There was slight waves, normal ocean waves. But it stopped instantly because he said, peace. Peace is not tranquility. It's not quiet. Peace is Jesus. Peace is the hope in the Lord, and it's finding God in the midst of the storm. Peace will change your perspective, and it will determine how you see the world. So that is my lesson. That is what I wrote up. Those are all of my notes. <laughs>